A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. How are you doing today, this beautiful Friday morning? We have a lot in store for you. One of the hot topics we'll be taking is electricity tariff hike won't increase cost of production, and that is being said by the power minister. Another one is court upholds CBN's regulation on collection of customers' social media handles. We'll also be taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as in top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. In between goals is a thing called life that has to be lived and enjoyed. And that is by Sid Caesar. He was an American writer and actor and comedian as well. And he says this morning, in between goals is a thing called life that has to be lived and enjoyed. Now, this is a beautiful Friday morning. We're going into the weekend. And so this just comes right in hand. Know that you need to enjoy your life. I know it's most times we always want to have that next goal, that next big thing to achieve. But just know that in between those goals is still your life and you need to enjoy your life while you're here. You're not promised tomorrow. So why are you not taking advantage of today? How are you resting? How are you spending time with the people that you love? How are you showing them that you care for them? How are you just enjoying your life in general? I think that is what this quote says. Um, in as much as you want to have all of those big dreams and aspirations and goals, you know, to tick off and say, hey, I have achieved this. Also understand that living your life and enjoying your life is another goal, really. is <laughs> a goal to actually enjoy your life. There are a lot of people that will probably... Um, leave this earth and they might have regrets and say i never really lived i never really enjoyed my life i was working so much and you shouldn't be one of those people it's okay to work don't get me wrong work and make those dreams come true but then still enjoy your life so that you're not having those regrets later on and saying what did i do with my youth what did i do when i was leaving um i'm i'm possibly going to leave this earth now and I don't really have any um, thing to show for it or I don't have any enjoyments or any memories that I can cherish and say yes I really really lived and you're here to live you're not here to just hustle your way through life and no you're here to live and enjoy life to the fullest and so what Sid Caesar is saying is so apt this morning that in between those goals um, is a thing called life that has to be lived and it has to be enjoyed so the question this morning is how are you enjoying your life? How are you living your life? Are you living it to the fullest? Or are you just hustling your way through life? I think that's my own quote to you this morning. Make sure you're living and enjoying your life to the fullest and stop hustling your life um, through. So just make sure that whatever you're doing, it's for yourself. It's for you to say, I am living my life. I'm enjoying my life. I'm, you know, trying to crush those goals as well but in between all of those goals that i'm trying to crush i'm also living and enjoying my life all right that's it for our quote of the day we'll move on to the top training stories this morning and this one says emirates airlines to resume operation in nigeria october 1. emirates airlines has announced plans to recommence flight operations to nigerian airports starting from october 1 2024 following a two-year hiatus from operating in nigeria the airline announced this via its official X account on Thursday. The service will be operated using a Boeing 777-300 
ER EK783 will depart to Dubai at 9.45 a.m., arriving in Lagos at 3.20 p.m. The return flight EK784 will leave Lagos at 5.30 p.m. and arrive Dubai at 5.10 a.m. the next day. Adnan Kazim, Emirates Deputy President and Chief Commercial Officer, said, in quotes, we thank the Nigeria government for the partnership and support in re-establishing this route, and we look forward to welcoming passengers passengers back on board. With the resumption of operations to Nigeria, Emirates operates 19 getaways in Africa with 157 flights per week from Dubai, with further reach to an additional 130 regional points in Africa through its code share and interline partnerships with South African Airways, Aer Lingua Royal Air Morocco, Tunis Air, among others. Well, in quotes, it says, as a major economic hub in Africa, Nigeria and the UAE have built strong bilateral trade relations over the years, headlined by Lagos as the nation's commercial center. With the resumption of daily passenger flights, the airline's cargo arm, Emirates Sky Cargo, will further bolster the trade relationship by offering more than 300 tons of belly hold cargo capacity in and out of Lagos every week. Nigeria's Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development, Festus Kiamo SAN, had previously hinted at the development earlier. And yes, um, this is such, you know, it gladdens my heart that Emirates is coming back. I know that um, the Minister of Aviation had hinted this in June, saying, or rather saying that, um, you know, Emirates will start operations in June. Um, he had talked about this after the, the um, you know, the air show in Dubai in uh, November 2023. Now, June is almost around the corner. It's just a month away, but we're not seeing Emirates here yet. <laughs> but at least we know that by October 1st, which happens to be, um, Nigeria's Independence Day, Emirates will start operation. Now, I, I feel like we also need to look at the root cause of why Emirates had to leave. In October 2022, Emirates also halted um, its operations in Nigeria because they could not repatriate their funds. And so my question now is, I hope, you know, the government is making sure that that doesn't happen again for Emirates to say they want to leave or other airlines to want to leave as well. Um, so it's important that when we have these people come into our country. It is a sustainable environment, one, for them to thrive, and two, it's also a good environment for them to say, yes, we can take back our monies. Because things like this, when they happen over time, people do not trust your economy anymore. People do not trust your government. People would feel like, you know what, I don't want to do business there. So it's important that I'm, I'm happy that this um, relationship is you know coming back this partnership um is coming back and you know we might just have emirates back people who have to travel to dubai um uh, you know can can go with emirates but then let's just make sure that what happened before doesn't happen again and so i will call in on the nigerian government to ensure that you know whatever needs to be done um to keep all of these airlines happy in nigeria they keep doing that and not making them or chasing them away, especially when it comes to funds, because obviously you need your funds to be able to run your business. And so if Emirates had to leave saying you know, we, we cannot repatriate our funds out of your country, it's understandable. But you see that two year hiatus, that was a long time. And let's just make sure that it doesn't happen again. So um, congratulations to Nigerians who want to fly to Dubai. Well, you have Emirates here coming um, from the 1st of October. And so... We'll just see how that goes. All right, moving over to another top trending story. This one talks about ASU threatens no pay and no work after two weeks. The Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, has threatened to down tools after two weeks if the President Bola Tinubu administration fails to pay public university lecturers their withheld salaries. ASU President Emmanuel Osudeke said it is unfair for the federal government to pay lecturers four months of their 2022 withheld salaries and hold on to that of three and a half months. In 2022, academic and non-academic unions in Nigeria embarked on an eight-month strike to press home some of their demands, including a better welfare package. The administration of the then President Mohamed Buhari subsequently invoked a no-work, no-pay policy against the unions, but President Bola Tinubu in October 2023 approved the release of four of the about eight months withheld salaries. Well, ASU members were paid four months of the withheld salaries, while members of the senior staff 
Association and Nigerian University, SANU, and the non-academic staff union, NASU, were not paid at all. The two non-academic unions were on strike early in March, while Education Minister Tahir Maman said that the government would consider half pay for them. Oshodeke said ASU members must be fully paid for the entire period of the industrial action in 2022. Oshodeke said if the federal government can award road contracts worth trillions and billions for university workers should not be a problem. The ASU president lamented that many lecturers are leaving the country because they are not well remunerated. This is quite sad because obviously every liberal is due is wages and so um, when you hear of this strike, um, ASU is going on strike, it's, it's quite sad because it just seems as if we're playing with the future of our children. The children need to go to school. We always say the children uh, are the leaders of tomorrow, but if you do not give them the right resources to be able to become those leaders, then what are you doing? And I feel education needs to be something that is of utmost priority in Nigeria. Why are we not talking about free education? We're still dilly-dallying on that level of not paying workers. And then workers have to go on strike. And when they go on strike, obviously the, the students cannot go to school. And when they don't go to school, they're not educated. Right, at least, you know, the formal education that we all know, they don't have that. Or students go to school and it takes years before they can graduate and come out of school and start to work. Why are we not putting utmost priority into the educational system? It should be one of the top in the scale of preference, right? And so, I mean, them asking for their pay, because at the end of the day, if you had paid them well, if they got, you know, good remuneration, they wouldn't even have to strike in the first place. So paying some and leaving some is almost like you're picking and choosing. You're paying a select few. Why don't you just pay everyone and so I, I i i share their sentiments i share their sentiments what i feel like is at this point that both parties start to negotiate come to the table you know bring your strong reasons the federal government to say you know what this is what we can do and if there's already something no work no pay make sure that you're working so you can get paid and the federal government should make sure they're paying you so that you can start to work because at the end of the day you wouldn't want to work when you're not being paid because money sometimes it's a big motivator regardless of you know other welfare packages or any other thing or you know that words of affirmation that you get money the money in your bank account knowing that you're confident that if you need something you can afford it that's just a big motivator and so the federal government needs to ensure that if they are going to enact that rule of no work no pay then you need to hold your end of the bargain you cannot expect to say no work no pay you're not paying them and then you expect them to sip to keep coming to work how do you expect them to pay transportation there how do you expect them to you know give in their best how do you expect these children to be educated when some of you know the people that are supposed to educate them are not in their best psychologically if we start to look at psychoanalysis you would you would be shocked at some some people who are going to work and they're not even happy with their jobs but then when there is money it also you know just serve as a motivator and so i feel like the federal government needs to hold the end of the bargain the um asu the the, the association needs to come speak to the federal government let's just have a dialogue and see what is substantial one and what is sustainable two at the end of the day we want these children to be educated because Let's not forget, we say they are the leaders of tomorrow, and if we want the leaders of tomorrow, we want them to have the right resources that they need so they can lead Nigeria forward when they get there. All right, that's it for that top trending story. We'll move over to another one, and this one says, Federal Government Opens Student Loan Application Portal on May 24. The federal government, through the Nigerian Education Loan Fund, on Thursday announced May 24, 2024, as the official date for the opening of the portal for student loan applications. The announcement was made in a statement by the media lead for NELF fund, Nasir Anyatogo. Anyatogo, in a statement, said the opening of the application portal marked a significant milestone in the commitment of President Bola Tinubu to fostering accessible and inclusive education for all Nigerian students. 
On June 12, 2023, Tinubu signed the Access to Higher Education Act 2023 into law to enable indigent students to access interest-free loans for their educational pursuits in any Nigerian tertiary institution. The act, popularly known as the Student Loan Law, also established the Nigerian Education Loan Fund to process all loan requests, grants, disbursements, and recovery. Although the government initially announced that the scheme would be launched in September, it suffered several delays leading to an indefinite postponement in early March. The presidency had linked the delay to Tinubu's directive to expand the scheme to include loans for vocational skills. After receiving briefing from the NELF fund team by the lead Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, on January 2022, the president had directed the fund to extend interest-free loans to Nigerian students interested in skill development programs. The president based his decision on the need for the scheme to accommodate those who may not want to pursue a university education, noting that skill acquisition is an essential and obtaining as obtaining undergraduate and graduate academic qualifications. The portal, according to the statement, provides a user-friendly interface for students to submit their loan applications conveniently. Student can access the portal on www.nelf.gov.ng to begin application. Well, I mean, we're just talking about, you know, ASU and being on strike, and then we're moving over to the student loan, um, which really just talks about our educational sector. And I mean, it is commendable that the presidency had, you know, even thought about this in the first place because there are people who definitely want to be educated, but they do not have the funds to be able to afford it. And when you think of so many things that are happening in Nigeria and the hyperinflation that we're talking about, how can you even save up to go to school? And so with this, this definitely, it's right on time, especially for people who really want to go to school. And I love the fact that they've added the ones for vocational studies as well, because there are people who do not just want to go to, um, you know, a formal school and say, okay, I want to go to the university of this and study engineering or law or um, accountancy or something. There are people who say, I want to, you know, study this. I want to study how to, the practicality of stuff. I want to study bead making. I want to study hat making. I want to study makeup. And so when you think of you know vocational studies it is equally as important as going to a formal university so i love the fact that you know they've added you know both of this now there was that delay and everybody was wondering why the delay and also also you know in the actual um uh, thing that was being said um, sent out to say okay these are the criteria um, there was the one of, you know, having some guarantors. There was the one of, you know, a family having to, you know, just earn about 500000 And it, it was a, a whole lot. So uh, they obviously had to amend that. Now, with the amendment, it seems a bit more understandable or more receptive for Nigerians. And they can say, yes, we can plug into this. Now, I don't know how many people um, will be able to even plug into this, but I hope that the federal government is looking at um, as much people as possible because everyone needs some form of education whether formal or informal so everyone just needs some form of education so kudos to them where well, we're looking at may 24 and um we just hope that the portal opens up and people can start to apply um because september is around the corner and you know in all of this we, this is a great scheme let's let's not take out from that this is a great scheme but in all of this all of these efforts will be futile if you know ASU decides to go on strike. So I think in as much as the federal government is trying their best to put out this loan scheme and make sure that people can get educated, they still need to look at the people who are supposed to educate them and ensure that they are paying them their remuneration. Else, these efforts, like I said, would be futile. So I know the federal government is coming from a good place, you know, saying we want to have this, but also look at this, um, the, 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 the academic staff and the non-academic staff as well of these universities so that everybody can work hand in hand and just make sure that, you know, all Nigerians are happy, all Nigerians are educated and we all have the resources that we need. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather and when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.